What's going on guys? Jay Curtis Strickland here and you are now watching Tea and Fuckery. Before we get started, if you could do me a little favor, click on that subscribe button, click on the little bell for notifications, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. Today we have a very special guest. I'm sure many of you know him as the singer of the Cro-Mags, the singer of Blood Clot. Uh, he's a vegan uh, Iron Man competitor and he's been all over the place. Author, uh, he was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast, and ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. John Joseph. What's happening? What's going on, man? I, I, I have to take, uh, I have to call you out on one thing. Okay. I'm not special. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, that wheelchair Santa, that was pretty special. Oh, all right, we're going to go there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's a great story, man. Yeah, well, you know, I got a lot of those in the in the arsenal. So, uh, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you studied under uh, McKee and like, you know, he's he's the prime guru for writing. Oh, you got it. Oh, wow. How about that? I'm working on uh, a couple of projects now. So what you got going, man? Uh, so I'm adapting Evolution of a Crow Magnon. If you look all over there, that's the step out. Oh, line. wow for the film and then I'm working on a I'm working on a uh comedy with my brother like uh, a sitcom that we're going to pitch uh about being in foster homes and shit it's funny so a sitcom yeah yeah so make light know, of it you got to <laughs> yeah you know it's uh yeah so you know I got a bunch of stuff working on another book about addiction it's book number six and um just keep him busy man nice now okay so I was listening to uh Gavin McGinnis one day and he was talking about whenever you moved out of New York he was like he was like if anybody knows who John Joseph is he is New York and when he moved out of New York it was a big deal you know and you know yeah. I know you kind of talked about some of like the you know, the Julianization of New York and like the sanitation of it and whatnot. But what do you feel like was, do you feel like there was like a catalyst or like a tipping point to when you were like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Going uh, south. Well, to be, to be honest with you, I was already talking about moving just cause I, I competed in Ironman and, uh, you know, I wanted to be somewhere where it's warm year round where I can train, you know, I mean, New York, you know, once you get November, December, January, February, March, like the training outside is whatever. But, you know, the city, the, you know, the quality of life is, uh, has gone down in the city, man. And, and it's the politicians fault. Uh, you know, you, you know, if people do fucked up shit, you don't let them out of jail, dude. I'm sorry, but I'm, I, you know, I did time when I was a kid. So, um, you know, the thing uh, that really got me, though, was just like I said, the quality of life was going down, like the whole shit they pulled over COVID, shutting the fucking city down and then all these passports for shit that don't even work. Motherfuckers are talking about five shots now. Yeah. So if it don't stop the spread and don't stop you from getting it or anything else, why the fuck they mandating it? And it just got real stupid. I'm like, I just was like, yo, I don't want to like, I go back a lot. I'm, I'm working on the blood clot record now. So I was up there, you know, mixing and, and doing other stuff. And I still do the walking tours and everything. And, uh, you know, it's just, this is home base for me. And I love it. Cause like, you know, the cost of living in New York is ridiculous. I'm uh, I'm paying like $600 less a month here for a fucking three bedroom house. And I had a one bedroom apartment. It's just lost its mystique. And, uh, and that's coming from somebody who's a fucking lifelong New Yorker. I grew up in the 70s on the streets, the 80s, the fucking 90s, when New York was New York. Now it's just a bunch of these fucking trust fund kids that moved into the city they got attitudes with everybody. Like, I don't know. It's just, it just is not, I love New York. It's, it's, it, I mean, I'm rocking, I'm rocking the hat because, uh, 
It's the 62 World Series, and I'm born in 62. I'm kind of rocking my hat, too. <laughs> yeah, so, so like, uh, you know, to me, it was just like, I want to preserve those memories that I have of New York the way it was, and, like, you know, I had shit go down, like, I, you know, some stupid shit on the street, motherfuckers trying to violate, and you got to, like, handle business and, and I did and I and like I, I almost caught a case for it you know like it's just not you know we had honor and like like you know back in the day it was like if some shit went down I mean you know I got shot I got stabbed I got beat with fucking baseball bats pipes I never went to the cops and snitched on anybody it you know so it's like it's, it's a different mentality now. Like, I had this kid try to, you know, a 20-something-year-old fucking Spanish kid try to rob my friend's bike uh, wheels and shit. And, and I was like, yo, come on, man. And, like, you know, the motherfucker pulled the box razor on me and, like, tried to slice my face. And I did what I do, you know? Like, that's... I've been a street fighter my whole life. So it didn't end well for him. And then he went and got the cops against me. And I, you know, if there wasn't a witness, I would have went to fucking jail. I would have went to fucking jail. So it's just like I said, um, I don't know, man. It just, it's, it's been going downhill for a while, you know? And yeah. I just was like, I just wasn't feeling it anymore, you know? And uh, now I get to live vicariously through the old times and what, what we went through and I'm writing about it. Um, uh, there's a TV show, another TV show coming about the Lower East Side, which I'm on staff to write. So like, uh, you know, that's how I, and, and I still keep, you know, a little bit of my finger in the water of that energy, you know, going, I go up to, I was just there. So, I mean, I'm there like once a month or whatever the fuck. So. Um, we just played that show in Tompkins Square Park. The yeah, dude. I wish I could have been there. It looked amazing. Yeah, it was great. And the first time was great, too. But then you get all the little cancer culture vultures fucking like, ah, they endangered people's lives and they didn't do it. You know, you get these whiny little bitch ass punk rock motherfuckers. And they're supposed to be hardcore. They're like, they didn't do what the government said to do. Yes. They put people's lives in danger. That's the thing, man. Like, I, I'm sitting here, like, seeing all these, you know, scene veterans and, and people in bands and stuff calling for forced vaccinations. I'm like, Dude, that, that is so cowards. antithetical to Fuck punk. Fuck all man. those people. Jello Biafra, all of them. Motherfuckers yeah. out there, vaccinated only shows. Yo, they everybody showed their fucking colors, man, in the last in the last couple of years. Oh yeah. I said straight up, I ain't never playing a show if it's vaccinated only. I will not fucking play at that fucking venue. And we're working on the record and I'm just glad to be in a band with everybody that thinks the fucking same, you know? It's bullshit, dude. Like the yeah. whole COVID shit, they came out and said all the numbers were greatly exaggerated. If somebody got shot in the head with a gun and died but had COVID, it was listed it as, was listed COVID. as COVID death. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Now they're on five shots, the shit don't work. And like I have friends that lost their fucking jobs in New York and 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 can't even get on any kind of government anything because yeah. like they won't give them unemployment because, because they denied the shot. They refuse to fucking bow down to these motherfuckers. And that's the whole thing. Yo, punk rock was supposed to be fuck the establishment, fuck yeah. the government. Now you get motherfuckers like Jello Biafra telling people to rat people out to the FBI. Yeah. And, and, and you know, what happened to if they don't listen to Gavin Newsom? What happened to California Uber oh, Alice? <laughs> what happened to his other song, Government Flu? Now he's yeah. like, oh, anti vaxxers. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it just fucking cowards. And like McKee says, true characters only revealed under pressure. So we see who the fuck is who now. That's yeah. all. I grew up on punk rock. I was going to punk rock shows in the 70s. The anti-establishment shit. See, that's the whole thing. I have never changed my stance. They changed. So now 
They're looking at me like I'm an anti. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm talking. Read the lyrics I wrote in the early 80s. Yeah. I still live that shit today. Oh, yeah. Today, I still live all of that shit that I sang about, right? Yeah. I'm not the one that changed. You did. Exactly. You people, well, you, you, you showed your true colors. And now you get, you know, little fucking chumps in like hardcore, you know, chat rooms. It's all these little fucking chumps yeah. writing shit on the internet. And then I'm like, and they say shit. And I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, here's where I'm going to be. Like, why don't you come uh, to where I'm going to be at and we could discuss it, you know, because, and then it's like silence. Or, listen, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't, my whole philosophy is I don't give a fuck what you do. Just leave me the fuck alone. Right. The yeah. fact Look that all of a sudden, your medicine don't work if I don't take the medicine. Right. Like it, it's just it's just ridiculous. And I just wanted to be left the fuck alone. I didn't say shit until motherfuckers started opening up their fucking mouth. And that's yeah. and, and, and it ain't just the punk rockers, it's the vegans, it's yeah. the plant-based community, it's the new age spiritualists. They all showed that they're a bunch of fucking cowards. Yeah. That's bottom line. It, it was really heartbreaking for me to see some of the people that I'd looked up to kowtowing to the establishment because, you know, they want to be able to go and eat in a restaurant again. Like, fuck you, you know, like. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all it's all fucking bullshit. And I won't even mention no names. You got motherfuckers out there now that are like. Uh, yeah, uh, you have to wear a mask at our show and it's it's either vaccine or, you know, proof of, uh, you know, a negative COVID test and all this other bullshit. Yeah. And nobody's even talking about how many people died from taking these fucking shots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and I mean, the numbers and, and, are vastly and, and, underreported. And, 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 you know, I got called out because. I criticize Dave Grohl, who gets up and sings fucking bad brain songs. About every, you know, like if you read the Bad Brains lyrics, how can you play those songs and then get up and do a Vax Live concert and take millions of dollars from the right. pharmaceutical industry at, who is corrupt as a motherfucker and then claim that you're like this punk rock fucking veteran? And then I just said something on my page. I said, I said, yeah, Dave Grohl, the, the flu Pfizer's or whatever the fuck, and they <laughs> picked it up and ran with it. And then the next thing I'm getting, you know, cancel culture, mother, who are you? Dave Grohl made millions of dollars. You're a nobody. I'm like, is that the judge of a good person? Right. Yeah, that and shouldn't be the litmus test Very for success. interestingly enough, the drummer of the Foo Fighters just died, right? Yeah. His heart swelled to twice the normal size of what it how come nobody's allowed to talk about that the shots are fucking killing people if you go and you look up the cause of death the taylor hawkins right now you know what it says no cause of death has been revealed no shit but his heart was twice the size of what it was his heart went from 300 grams to 600 grams and he took the fucking vaccine and guess what he was it, it's myocarditis like, do the fucking research, man. All these yeah. people that are talking shit, they don't even know what they're talking about. Right. And then if you speak truth, you're a conspiracy theorist. Right. Yeah. That's and the it, shit that gets me. I think even I, I think even the more fucked up one was uh, I guess since we're not named names or anything, the band member that got kicked out because he couldn't take the shot because it, he had uh Guillain Barre syndrome. And if he took the shot, it could have killed him. Which band is that? uh the offspring. offspring yeah yeah that's my dude and you know jake 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 shield said listen what's his name the drummer right yeah right because jake shields just gave us a shout out he's like yo i jake shields was like i grew up on punk rock all these punk rockers turn out to be a bunch of fucking cowards yeah and the offspring and then they changed it, keep them vaccinated i never liked oh, them no. honestly anyway i'm like yeah. they were not really my thing yeah, I got spoiled by the bad brains and shit. But listen, what's I up, Israel? <laughs> Israel, Israel Joseph. Oh, fucking HR. <laughs> I don't call him Israel. <laughs> I don't know him as that. I know I know him as fucking HR. <laughs> no, but, no, no, no. Uh, on um, 
Rise, the singer that oh, was on Rise. Oh, dude, that's not Bad Brains, dude. That's <laughs> fuck. That ain't Bad Brains. Bad <laughs> Brains is HR, Earl, Doc, and Daryl. That's the fuck of Bad Brains. That's like saying the travesty that's out there now is the real Cro-Mags. Oh, you Got no. a fucking bass player that can't sing with a bunch of fucking, like, guys he looks like he met at a mall in Staten Island. <laughs> you know, a bus stop fucking band, and he's calling it the real Cro-Mags. Like, right. I mean, even when me and Mackie did it for the last 20 years, it was me, him, and AJ who's been in the band since the 90s. We still didn't have the audacity to call that shit the real Cro-Mags. You were ain't fearless vampire Cro-Mags. killers, right? It ain't the real Cro-Mags unless it's fucking, you know... Paris, me, Harley, fucking Dog, and Mackie. That's that's the real Chromax. Anything right. else, it's a fucking, it's an offshoot. Yeah, you man, I, I I feel you on that. Like I, I I happen to really like Rise a lot, and and Mackie played on that album. Um, yeah, that's all right. Mackie played on Quickness too. People don't know that. I didn't know that actually. Well, Mackie, they had uh, they had Taj singing, and Taj couldn't cut it. So that Mackie had already done the fucking debate, the tracks. They already tracked everything. And then um, I get a call from HR. He's like, yo, come over to Doc's house on, on Avenue B. Uh, I'm going to be singing on this record. And he sat there with a fucking pad with the fucking lyrics to fucking um, Soulcraft and was singing the shit to me with the tape on of the track and like a cassette tape. And I was like, what the fuck? And he was writing and he wrote, he had just written the words and he was reading it, singing it off the pad. So I was like, wow. That's a, but, that's a banger, man. That, that song. Oh well, yeah. Man. Soul craft's crazy. Yeah. You know, but, but I mean, my whole thing is like, I, I don't care. See, I, I didn't care what anybody else did. That's the whole thing. If you wanted to do what the government told you to do, by all means, go and fucking do whatever you, whatever. My problem is with the motherfuckers that came out against people like us that didn't want to, that said, I just said, listen, I'm going to wait till the fucking documentation of the trials come right. out and then I'll make my decision. Well, guess what? Look at the fucking Pfizer documents that just got released. Yep. If y'all motherfuckers are going to talk shit, let's talk shit. Let's talk real fucking facts, not what the government tells you and what, you know, look at the evening news brought to you by Pfizer. Yeah. It's like, dude, <laughs> you people, are, you're not fucking, it, it, and Dr. Robert Malone, which is why they, you know, they say my, my account, Instagram account was hacked. But it wasn't. It was taken down because I posted the Robert Malone and the fucking Peter McCullough and the Alex Berenson podcast on Joe Rogan. And then they cut my shit the fuck off. Now they got this fucking Ministry of Truth uh, fucking bullshit that's going on. Look what's going on in America, people. You fucking better start paying attention because you this was a test run for all the real shit. And all of you motherfuckers, 90 fucking percent of you fucking bowed down to this government and the shit they did. They took your job for not injecting an experimental vaccine into your body. Well, and the punk rockers came out against us because we said, yo, 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 that's that's kind of fucked up. man." And you fucking they tried to fucking cancel uh, people that spoke out against what the fuck was going on. Yep. And that's what he talked about. Mass formation psychosis. Go on, do your research, go fucking listen. Dr. Robert Malone was the co-inventor of the mRNA vaccine. So he's telling you they're using it for what they, it wasn't supposed to be used for. And now the winter of death and illness was bullshit too. Yeah. Because look who's ending up in the hospital and getting the repeated cases of COVID now. It's the vaccinated people. And it's because the mRNA, which is not a vaccine, it's a therapeutic is being used for the wrong way that it was intended. And all I got to say is I write books. I research shit. I read fucking Robert Kennedy Jr.'s book about Fauci and Bill Gates. That was a number one bestseller on Amazon. New York Times bestseller. Did you see Robert Kennedy Jr. getting any media coverage and he has the number one book in America? Nope. 
What's up, people? Yeah. It's fucking censorship. It's censorship. Now they're coming out with this next shit with this woman who was like, I need to know who I got to fuck to become rich and famous. This is, the, <laughs> this is the fucking broad that they got now in charge of the Ministry of Information. Right. Yeah. I, I think everybody needs all the shit. The Hunter Biden laptop. I'm not I don't fucking Trump's a piece of shit, too. That's the other thing. If you came out against what Biden's doing and all this shit. You're a Trump supporter. Fuck yeah. Donald Trump. You can look at my Instagram shit when he was the president or look at any of my social media. I called that motherfucker out too. I called out Obama, the fucking bomber who fucking killed, f- dropped a bomb every two minutes of his fucking presidency. Yeah. I called out fucking Bush. I called out Clinton. I called them all out. But now if you call out Biden, all of a sudden... You're a you're a fucking conspiracy theorist, Trump supporting right wing right. fucking like asshole. Yeah, I had that exchange with somebody the other day. They were like, you know, you're talking heavily right wing ideology and whatnot. I'm like, I'm just telling the truth, man. And like, I'm calling it like I see it. And like, if you're going to call me whatever, then fuck you. You know, like, I don't That's care. it. That's my philosophy. That's what I say to these motherfuckers, too. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. First of all, you got no fucking street smarts. To be sitting there fucking, you, if you got any education at all, it's from fucking books from the system. Right. Because right. look how easily and gullible you were that you drank the fucking media Kool-Aid. Look who controls the media, BlackRock yeah. and all these other corporations. You're never going to hear the truth in the fucking mainstream media. Never. So, you know, listen, I'll, I I offered to debate any one of the motherfuckers live. Je, a fucking, uh, uh, fucking homeboy, fake ass Jello Biafra, all of them. Not I would love them, to facilitate that if you're down. fucking one of them would stand up and fucking debate. I, no. Okay? No. So, you know, and he's wishing death on people who didn't take the vaccine. <laughs> Un- That's the real believe- irony. Yeah. Un-fucking believable. That guy should worry about fucking, you know, his own fucking health. We played with him four years ago. He was so fucking overweight. He couldn't even fucking walk around the fucking stage and had to have a backup fucking singer singing half the lyrics with him. Young God. You know, I'm (laughs) just, you know, it's just unbelievable. And the cancer culture shit that went on when we did that concert in Tompkins Square Park. It just, it, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, calling us fucking, oh, yeah, they spread QAnon. I've never been on the QAnon website. Neither once. have I. <laughs> if a QAnon motherfucker says wheatgrass is good for you and I say wheatgrass is good for me, does that mean I'm a QAnon motherfucker? So the point is, the truth is the truth. Yeah. It don't matter what mouth it comes out of. Exactly. Right. I don't care who the fuck says it. I'm looking to who's speaking the truth. Right. I don't give a fuck who says it. So, dude, man, I, I, I you know, we have a, a similar trajectory in that, like, you know, I was in the military. I served in the Marines for a stint of time. You know, I uh, played in hardcore punk rock bands. Uh, you know, I, I'd served as a brahmachari for two years. And, you know, I, I'm curious to hear about, you know, your your temple living, you know, because I know you were talking about an evolution. You you went out yeah. on the pick, which, by the way, uh, Showery uh, wrote my initiation recommendation when I was. In oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shower. Shari trained me up in Hawaii, man. Yeah, he's he's. Well, you know, that's another like, that's another scam that's going on. The whole movement with these fake gurus and shit. Now everybody's propping up Radhanath. Yo, Radhanath paid for the killing of a devotee. Radhanath yeah. was involved in the whole New Vrindavan shit that was going on with, with Kirtan and Ananda. And when you would go up at the house on the hill, they'd have little kids running around naked in the house. Listen, a lot of crazy shit went on in New Vrindavan and Radhanath was part of it. Now they're propping him up like he's the big guru of the movement. He never glorifies. If you see him, I've seen him on the in, uh, get on the news. Never talked about Prabhupada. Never glorified Srila Prabhupada. So you know, and now he has all his little followers. 
that sit Yo there, Guinness. Ray Capo and the rest of them. I'm like, dude, come on, man. Wearing fucking dope. And now they're prop, they're, they're promoting the whole bogus fucking gurus. They're promoting, they're promoting people that fucking were facilitated molesting fucking children. Yeah. Their, yeah. their guru before that was Donadar. That's it. Donadar, I, my friend got raped by Donadar's friend in the guru cool. And Donadar beat the shit out of the kids in the guru cool to keep them quiet. So the, these are all scoundrels. And it's either scoundrels are going to be found in politics or exploiting people through religion. Yeah. And that's that's what that's what this is. And Prabhupada's the guru. He never appointed any of them to be guru and just see all the shit that they've done since Prabhupada left the planet. So that's just proof right there. A I- Rameshwar <laughs> who fucking molested a fucking 12-year-old, a 14-year-old girl and stole $2 million. Srila Rameshwar. Jesus Christ. Get that's the awful. fuck out of so here. He, he, all right. So he, I remember this was like kind of a, you know, I because I, I didn't go back to ISKCON. I was thinking about it. But when they started pushing the vax, I was like, fuck no. I am the not vax. going back. Yeah, that's another thing. All the sannyasis were pushing the vax. And I'm like, no. I said, no, I'm not going to. Sorry. Well, you know? that, that, that must have just been in the last couple of years because that's when they started pushing that. But one of the guys who one of the guys are down with the with the World Economic Forum who designed who wrote out the whole thing uh, to push the vaccine in the temples. Which one? This is all I forget what his name is. Somebody just told me his name, and he's like uh, he's he's Indian body, but he's he was down with the WEC, the World Economic, uh, the WEF. I'm sorry, World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, and all these all these scumbags. Uh, you know. Listen, they infiltrated the movement. Prabhupada's movement was the fastest growing religion on the planet in the 60s and 70s, man. And then it became the butt of jokes. Why? Why was that? Because of all the shit that they've done. All the shit that they've done. They're full of shit. And I'll say it straight the fuck up. They beat up and murdered people that spoke out against them. They raped women and sent them for fucking abortions. They, I mean, they violated every single aspect of that of that philosophy. They they were never appointed by Prabhupada to take gurus and name themselves Srila Acharya Dave and this and that. <laughs> he, you know, so, I I was doing service. I, I was a you know as a brahmachari. I had a car. It wasn't in my possession at the time, but it was back home and. Uh, you know, I would, I drove him up to the temple, up to New Galoka one time and, you know, I was driving, I was asleep or not, I was not asleep. I was sleeping. I was like, if I don't get some fucking sleep, I am going to pass out at the wheel. And so while he was giving a Bhagavatam lesson, I slept in the car. And so, you know, I didn't have a chance to get gas. And I remember we were getting on the interstate and he was like, he was like, what, what are you doing? Stopping up at this gas station. I was like, I, I need to go get some gas. And he was like, why didn't you do that before? Instead of wasting my time, I was like, motherfucker, are you serious? Like, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, you're in my car. They're man. all like, like that. I got no love for none of them. And they're, they're supposed to be in the, in, in the renounced order of life. And they all have bank accounts with millions of dollars. Yeah. And, 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 and Radhanath stole the, the Bhakti center. He stole that from the devotees that built that place. It, it's just one scam after another. Yeah. They're scam artists. Yeah. Do you, do you ever go to the temple? I go to the temple here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I go to see the, you know, I go to see the deities in New York when I was there or whatever, but like, you know, you like, try to stay aloof from the my, bullshit. Oh, dude. They basically <laughs> were like, it's you know, they're very similar to the government of like, anyone who talks against us is a demon. Right. You know, anybody who talks against us is a QAnon conspiracy. And, and you're not allowed to ask questions and, you know. Of course, that's called a cult. That's what they turn Prabhupada's movement into, so, a cult. Here was my first Gita. It's a it's a Krishna books Gita, and it was given to me at the Hindu Center in Charlotte. And I brought that up to the the temple, and I remember everybody was like, "Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that?" I was like, 
somebody gave it to me, you know, and like yeah. it's it's a shame how you know for they so changed long the books too. They yeah. changed all the books. They did everything. Prabhupada told them not to do. They yeah. did. Yep. And Prabhupada said demons have come in the garb of devotees to destroy the movement from within. Yep. Who was he talking about? Tamal Krishna, all of these guys that have done all this crazy shit. Yeah. You know, and, and, and look at the other guy, Bhakta Tirtha, the black body uh, guru who got fucking, who was doing all kinds of shit and fucking women and all kinds of shit. And then when women spoke out against it, he sent one to the to this temple in like this very dangerous part of the world and she and had her murdered. These are fucking scoundrels, man. Yeah. I can't even begin to tell you the shit that I seen go down in the Brooklyn Temple. And that's when I started being like, and that's why when I did the spin article back in the 90s, and I was like, they did the big article, and I was like, yo, they're acting like like everything in this movement is all fucking honky dory. They're doing crazy shit. Yeah. They're like, and, and then look, look at look at uh, Bob and Anders over there running Mayapur now. It's bad enough he already stole all this money, and then left the movement. And he opened up a gay porno theater in 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 fucking Sydney with the money that he stole. Now they put because he has dirt on all these people. See, that's the thing. They get away with doing all this shit because they all have dirt on each other. Oh yeah, Mama Pod, all of them. All of these bogus fucking gurus have dirt on each other. Yeah. So no one will fucking rat because they're just as guilty by association. Like the fucking, you know, like the, like song the skulls. Goes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the thing was, now they put him in charge of the Mayapur project. And now all these millions of dollars are missing from Mayapur. Oh. So it, it, it's just... And it's disgusting because they've they raped fucking children in India. Yeah. They've done disgusting shit. Yeah. And they need to be called out on it. And, and that's the problem is that they won't allow any uh, investigation or criticism into it. That's what's really fucked up. Absolutely about not. Absolutely not. My, I, like I said, I had friends that were molested in the in the Krishna schools, and you know they fucking shun them away. Like people have committed suicide from what. The shit that these these people have done. Yeah. It's just fucking insane, man. And man, the world is like better get a fucking wake up call soon, man. Yeah. Because uh the way everything's going, and 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 and, and listen, I've been an advocate of like finding out what the truth is for most of my adult life. Yeah, man. I'm like, and when I find out. When I found out all the shit that was going on in the Brooklyn Temple and all the shit that was going on with these bogus gurus, I spoke out against them, right? Yeah. That's what Edmund Burke says. All it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Well, and I spoke out against Sri Dayananda. And again, you know, they're, why are you speaking out against senior devotees? And I'm like, this is some main shit that I'm I can't so, even get into details about it, but well, I was like, here's the crazy shit. Just like just like Vic from 108. When he uh what what no, what band was was he in 108, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and in, inside Vic, out before and, that. And, yeah. And, and, and uh 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 Guna Grahi caught him fucking jerking off to a porno in the motorhome and called him and called him fucking motorhome swami or whatever nickname he had. These guys are fucking scoundrels, man. They're frauds. Yeah. And then they say, oh, you shouldn't commit Vaishnava Aparad, like a, a, an offense against it. And I and my rebuttal is, well, if they're not acting like a devotee, then all bets are off. It's right. not a, it's not an offense to call. Prabhupada said if a thief enters the room, it's your duty to speak up so that everyone knows that that person's a thief and you guard your valuables. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, there, there's got to be some sort of accountability. Otherwise, I mean, whatever movement's left is just going to be completely it's devastated already, anyway. It's not even the same movement. They're turning it into a new age, fucking politically correct bullshit fucking movement. Right. That's And that's I what I was kind of... I had fucking with, saying yeah, that, yeah. you know, listen, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness is... You don't fucking murder children in the womb and you don't fucking kill animals and you don't and you don't support Prabhupada said there'll never be peace on this planet as long as they murder children in the womb 
and kill animals. Right. So that's coming from a pure devotee. If Prabhupada came to the planet today, they would try to cancel him. They would have oh, protests sure. outside of the temples well, to try to cancel Prabhupada. They they have been saying some kind of heinous shit about him. I'm like, what? Like, well, let them say that shit in front of me because I'll knock their fucking teeth down their fucking throat. <laughs> Any one of them. Love it. That's a fucking call out. You yeah. mouth off and you make an offense about Proudbond in front of me, you're going to be getting some fucking free dental work. Real talk. <laughs> and, and because, yeah, and, and I had, you know, and, and then they're like, well, you know, I support a women's right. That's not what Prabhupada said. You don't, you don't, you don't, you know, if you do an act and, and uh, you know, and, it, and and you get pregnant, you don't fucking kill a fucking child. Right. That's according to the Vaders. I don't care what they do out here. I'm saying what Prabhupada said. That's the highest principle in the material world. Yeah. It's your body, your choice, but it's also your, your choice to get the karma. Sure. Because don't think. You're going to fucking do what they're doing to children in the womb and you're not getting any karmic reaction for that. So I listen, I don't tell anybody what to do. You do what you need to fucking do. But to uh, when it comes time to talk the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and what Prabhupada said, that's that's the law. That's yeah. the law of the universe. And that's above any fucking Roe versus way or any of this bullshit that's going on right now. You know, I'd rather really talk about something a little more tangible, which is sure. blood clot music that's coming out and how, you know, we're going to be uh, getting out there soon and playing some shows. We got Tom Capone playing guitar. Uh, so, uh, yeah, man, looking forward to that, you know. So you guys going to be doing any touring? uh you know that all depends who knows what the fuck's going to be going on you know this government whatever the fuck they're already talking about the next wave of whatever the fuck so you know who knows i do music because i love it so yeah. but i'm into the writing i got a couple of iron mans coming up i turn 60 soon so Dude. I'm uh, I'm racing in a new age group, sixty to sixty four, and I'm coming out there fucking swinging. So I got uh, Iron Man Florida, Iron Man Cozumel. So that's I'm concentrating on that. I just oh, yeah. yeah got over some injuries and stuff, so just been getting back at it. Well, you were talking about writing scripts earlier, and you know what do you, what do you feel like artistically, and you know uh, as far as film and television, what have you been watching lately? Uh, I mean, you know, I saw that film, I forget what the name of it was. It won for best screenplay. It was about the deaf girl and her parents were like, oh, Coda. oh, that was fucking great. It was good. I mean, there's, there's good movies that come out and most of it is shit. Yeah. So as a writer, I'm like, if I don't, you know, if you don't, if they're making all the mistakes in this, you know, like Robert McKee said, if the writer doesn't write, nobody write, nobody works. If the writer doesn't work. Yeah. So like the worst thing is when you see bad writing and it's just, um, you know, there's good stuff out there though. Yeah. I like, uh, you know, there's some good movies out there. Oh, uh, you know, the streaming services, whatever the fuck. I'm always like, I could put on an episode of Breaking Bad anywhere. And I'm like, fucking, you just get sucked in, dude. It's such a well-written show. So I got to the second season and I, I don't know why I dialed out of it, but everybody's like, no, you got to keep watching. You got to keep oh, watching. Nah, it was fucking genius, dude. Fucking the whole, you know, the funny thing was, um, through my book, when I did Meetings for Pussies, I got um, an agent that got to deal with ICM, and then he was switching over to television, and so he was like, do you have any television stuff? Did you write any stuff for TV? And I go, yeah, I've been working on this pilot about the police officer, the detective that took down the angel dust trade in New York City in the 70s, and he was a homicide detective, and he's so really, um, it was, you know, I was involved in the angel dust trade 
in 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 70, 77, 78. And I got uh, I got a meeting with uh, Vince Gilligan's agent, and he loved the shit. So you know, it's just been. Uh, I'm a big fan of Vince Gilligan, man. He's a fucking tremendous writer, and um, that that was just. It was just fucking brilliance, man. Every fucking aspect of that show. And it just, you know, for anybody that's out there writing, it shows to never give up because every network fucking turned that show down and said it would never get made. And then AMC picked it up. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible, you know? Like, it, uh, it groundbreaking television, you know, because it was just like, before, back in the day, you couldn't, like, you, you could easily watch a show and then, you know, the next episode would be something completely different, but then they hook you, you know, they get you locked in because it's all episodic and it, yeah. and it all continues from the previous story, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, uh, that's just my thing. And now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working, like I said, uh, on this, uh, comedy pilot for a show with my brother and uh you know was supposed to be doing this show about the lower east side with elgin james who's doing from uh 454 big block right yeah he also like righteous jams and all that like, yeah 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 uh, so yeah we're he's doing the mayans now so i guess we're waiting on that shit to be done filming this season the, the fucking the show kind of got in we got interest um you know, before the pandemic, like we were going to do it. And then because all his shit got pushed back with the Mayans. So that fucked our shit up. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. You know, I mean, uh, I'm a writer. I just like writing, man, and telling story. And It's cathartic, you know? Yeah, it is. It's great. And I got a lot of, you know, projects on the table. So we'll just uh, keep banging it out, man. Keep positive. Keep making music. Keep doing the arts, man. It's fucking awesome. John, and, I, you know, I, whoever wants to come check out the fucking band, great. You know, like, I, I mean, I think this uh, record that we're putting out with Blood Clot now is like, it's fucking, it's brutal, man. That's fucking awesome. I love the old stuff, so I can't wait to hear the new stuff. It's going to yeah. be sick, dude. Well, cool. dude, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, man, I really thank appreciate you. you. And, uh, yeah. Um, here's the uh, Evolution book. Oh, yeah, Joseph. that's the first. Uh, that's the first edition. Oh, is it? Nice. Yeah, man. Um, also, the author of uh, Meat is for Pussies. I don't own that one. And uh, the PMA Effect, which I'm currently listening to on Audible. Oh, shit. Look at that. How about that shit? Yeah, the PMA Effect. And then I just released a cookbook called Hardcore Kitchen. Oh, shit. And then a book on health called Unfuck Your Health. So Nice. That's so awesome, man. Well, like I said, John, appreciate you being here. And Thank everybody... You. Thanks Keep that PMA. Dude. Uh, hey, hey, listen, man. That's What's another up? thing people always say when you point out shit. Yo, where's the PMA? And let me just explain something. There's nothing more positive than speaking the truth. Remember that. Remember it. And all the crazy shit that's going on right now and what they're doing. And, like, you know, the fact that they passed these passports and all this shit, it's... We're headed toward a fucking crazy, crazy place on this planet. And if people don't start speaking out against what the fuck they're doing, man, we're going to be fucked. Well, you know, the, the thugs with uh, Operation Mockingbird integrated yeah. into the Star Trek script, vaccine passports for the new Star Trek show in 2024. I'm like, this is fucked. Like, yeah, of course, because that's dude. They're controlling all that shit, man. So, yeah. you know, anyway. John, I'd love to have you back, man. Hey, appreciate man, you coming time, on. Brother. Thanks like for I said, me. everybody, um, uh, go follow John on all his social media outlets. I'll be posting all the links down Thanks. here in the comments section. Yeah, appreciate you, man. And like I said, uh, check out his rock question authority, motherfucker. Exactly. All you the don't time. Bow down to authority. You fucking question authority. You hold them accountable. Damn right. Not the bullshit that's going on now. All right, guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click on that bell. John Joseph again. All right, man. Good bless stuff. You. Thanks, bro. Namaste. Namaste Job bless. Brother. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.